Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It's been a busy week, lots of news, lots of new developments. I'm going to be doing several videos today that I will then divvy up one at a time. Possibly the next few days, every day one new video. I just received a comment from a viewer who apparently viewed one of my earlier videos where I took care of a problem that the Epson Pro 3800 was displaying and it ended up being that the gasket that seals around the peripheral edges of the nozzle plate was not sealing due to gunk buildup. And so therefore it couldn't create a vacuum for a cleaning cycle to work properly. So I was getting a cyan channel that was not basically clearing even after several cleaning cycles. I used a set of Q-tips to clean it and it worked. Now this person owns 24 Epson printers. I don't know what model they are, but apparently they print up to 50,000 pages of whatever every year. And so they are used to working with Epson printers. Now this may or may not apply to Canon, but I'm going to go ahead and give you what his views are. And I'm going to go ahead and practice this. Now, here's a clear case of what we have been for ages preaching about may not be a good idea. And that is the use of Windex for long-term treatment of printheads that are stubbornly clogged or whatever. Apparently that's not supposed to be a good idea. And I'm going to read what he said. You can disagree or agree, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. It's your printer. You can do whatever you wish to it. But he's got 24 of them that he has to keep working constantly. He says, and I hope he doesn't mind me using his information here, because I'm going to go ahead and put into practice some of the methods that he has suggested. By the way, I'm recording directly off of my voice recorder because my lavalier connector stopped working. So I'm getting zero sound being transmitted to the voice recorder. So I hope the video is not too horribly bad as far as audio goes. We'll try to clean it up on post. Hi, Jose. I like your videos. Well done. I heard you say to use Windex to clean the printheads. That's what we've been doing all of this time, and everybody has been saying that it's fine. Never use Windex in big letters or any other commercial product. Now, that's odd because there are some products specifically made for cleaning printheads. We'll continue and see what he has to say. I have 24 Epson printers, and I print about 25,000 to 50K pages a year for in-house work. Back in 2009, I worked for a chemist, my dad, to formulate a clear ink or ink with zero pigment. So I take it he's using Epson printer with pigment because he mentions that here. This is called Epson cleaning solution. Epson ink is manufactured in Germany. Well, it used to be made in Mexico too. And there are some cartridges that I found that had a China uh, logo on it. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. It has no alcohol. It has no ammonia, soap, or acetone in it. Well, I agree with the acetone and the soap and the ammonia. The ink doesn't. Although some old ink didn't really smell like ammonia, especially some of the inks coming out of OCP in Germany. Windex that you buy uses tap water and not distilled water when they make it. Normal tap water has particular matter in it. And this stuff is big enough to clog your printheads. Your Q-tip can also leave behind particles. Sure, I agree with that. And we did not really apply the Q-tip to any delicate areas. And we made sure that we then wiped with a piece of gauze, which basically leaves no particles behind. If your Windex has ammonia in it, which it does, it's only about 0.5% ammonia, actually. The ammonia will disintegrate, melt, eat the plastics. Well... I'm not sure about that. Maybe full strength ammonia, but the ammonia in Windex is so weak anyway that I don't really think it would cause that sort of harm. And I've been doing this for two decades now, cleaning printheads with Windex and nothing has gone bad. So I don't mean to disagree with this viewpoint. I'm just bringing it out to you guys. You guys can take it any way you want. In fact, I'm going to buy some of what he is suggesting and come up with his cleaning solution, which seems to be a lot gentler on printheads, especially if we delve over to Canon printheads. 
Never use anything with ammonia, soap, or acetone. Acetone will melt plastic. I agree with that. Definitely, but none of this stuff has acetone in it. Epson ink is soluble in water. No need for more. Epson ink with no pigment is made of distilled water and DEG, or diethylene glycol reagent, D49-1. It must be reagent quality since it has to be free of particulates. You can buy DEG from a chemical company for about $110 per liter. I found a small 4-ounce bottle for about 20 bucks on Amazon, and it is reagent quality. Your clean solution is 10% DEG and 90% distilled water. And then he goes on suggesting how to prepare the bottles and so on. Basically, you can use a little 4-ounce drinking bottles, just dump out the water and then rinse them with distilled water twice and then fill them up with the solution that you make up. If you have a zero water filter that tests at zero particles, you can use that for rinsing. And then he goes on with some measurements. So 10% DEG in water or 20% if you want to make a stronger solution. If you have a stubborn clog on a printhead, DEG can also be found in our foods and household sundries, but do not use liquids containing DEG as they are full of little particles. Also, never rub anything on the bottom of the printhead. It will damage it. Well, I don't know, man. Um, they must be pretty durable because people have been using the wet paper towel system for, again, a couple of maybe three decades. And unless you really do it super rough, it doesn't seem to damage the printhead at all. Um, in fact, it makes it recover fully most of the time. And then he goes over uh, what somebody uh, quoted, patient is grossly underestimated. So be patient. I always talk about patient. Patience is what it takes. Do not do the most invasive method to try to unclog a printhead. Start with the simplest, most gentler, gentlest method to unclog your printhead, if that is indeed what the problem is. And to be on the clear side, print a test print daily, he says, daily at 100% highest quality. That I agree with. And in fact, uh, if you have a perch chart printed with no color management and at the highest possible quality your printer can produce, and that will really, really exercise those nozzles. Daily, I don't know about daily, Maybe yes, maybe no. It all depends. Whatever is easiest for your schedule is what I would tell you. Sometimes people don't print for a month and then they're surprised that they have a clog. You know, no, at least twice a week, but daily. Like this guy says, he's got to maintain 24 printers for goodness sakes. So, you know, he cannot afford to have one of those printers go down. So even though it might seem a little bit excessive, Hey, you cannot argue with success. If it works for him, it will very likely work for you as well as me. Then he goes on to say, he sent me a new comment, and I will go ahead and uh, read that very quickly, that they use OEM cartridges to prime and initialize the printer, then immediately switch over to refillable cartridges or SIS. OEM or genuine cartridges should be stored in a Ziploc sandwich bag with good labeling so that you have them when the machine is stuck. He may be referring to when you're trying to do a switch of glossy to matte black ink and one of your cartridges has not enough ink on the chip indicator as far as level. It will not allow you to do that switch. So maybe that's what he means by that. So you have them when the machine is stuck and requires OEM cartridges. Rarely happens, but when it does, you have to buy expensive OEM cartridges. Better to initialize the printer than remove them. And then he says, cheers from Dr. Epson. Cool. Anyway, so I have purchased a small bottle of that. It is a 1 to 10 solution that you make with distilled water. I have my distilled water already here. So we'll go ahead and give that a try and see how that works. Um, I'll also try it on other aspects, cleaning the interior portion of the printer, especially those of you who print a lot of borderless prints. That is something that will really very quickly dirty up the interior of your printer. So again, take this with a grain of salt. The guy works at this daily and he maintains 24 printers. So what can I say? Whether I agree or disagree, you cannot argue with success as my old boss used to tell me every day. So that is it for now. I'm going to do several videos as I stated earlier. I got a lot of stuff here and I'm going to show you what that is 
in the next few videos. And so until then, do not forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, the little notification bell so that you know whenever we upload anything either to do with printing or even drone flying, which is my next favorite thing to do. So happy printing, everybody, and bye-bye.